As gaming history tells us, it only takes one failure for a beloved developer's name to be ruined. A stubborn one, isn't he? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 games that destroyed a company's reputation. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're specifically looking at video game developers and publishers who had the trust and admiration of the public, but lost it all in one fell swoop. We are excluding the likes of No Man's Sky from this list, on the grounds that its creators, Hello Games, hadn't developed any major games before that project. Number 10, Haze, Free Radical Design. Watch your step, buddy. The satellite says you're coming up on a valley packed full of bad guys. Ambition's a powerful motivator, but if it's not tempered with self-control, it can quickly overwhelm one's work. Free Radical Design, creators of the much-loved Time Splitters games, may have learned this a bit too late with their last project, Haze, released in 2008. The game's intent, as a deconstruction of the shooter tropes, was seemingly meant to blend with Free Radical's desire to compete with Halo, but instead resulted in a really muddled affair. Keep moving! Don't stop! Hayes had severe narrative shortcomings and was plagued by bugs, leaving many gamers dissatisfied with both the game and with Free Radical. That this was the project that drove Free Radical Design into bankruptcy is sadly unsurprising. Feeling good, buddy? You look psyched, hell, you look so good, I wish I was you. Number 9, SimCity 2013. More than anything, Electronic Arts wanted the 2013 installment of SimCity to serve as a soft reboot, a way to shine a light on familiar and beloved gameplay in a new way. Unfortunately, the game that EA commissioned from Maxis fell victim to network outages and save file errors from the outset, due in part to the always online features that nobody really wanted. Once gamers managed to actually play SimCity, they found the experience to be both limited in scope and features when compared to its predecessors. As a result, Maxis' standing was tarnished, which may well have been a factor in the studio's shutdown, whether it was their fault or not. Number 8, Tomb Raider, The Angel of Darkness, Core Design. Swan songs should be a grand farewell, not a flailing and ultimately fruitless bid for relevance. This was the unfortunate fate of The Angel of Darkness, the last of the Tomb Raider games developed by Core Design. Its implementation of the then-outdated controls and combat mechanics was made worse by essential plot details and game features being cut from the game. Mademoiselle Carvier, it's Lara Croft. I need your help. The backlash and poor critical reception of The Angel of Darkness forced publisher Eidos' hands in taking core design off the series. The Tomb Raider series eventually returned to form in the hands of Crystal Dynamics with Legend in 2006. Number 7, Aliens, Colonial Marines, Gearbox Software. Rise and shine, Marines. This isn't a drill and you aren't in Kansas anymore. As heartbreaking as Duke Nukem Forever may have been, it doesn't quite compare to Gearbox Software's so-called passion project, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Billed as a continuation of the story of 1986's masterpiece, Aliens, the game managed to disgrace everyone involved in its creation through its unimpressive visuals, dull shooter gameplay, and baffling plot holes. Worse for Gearbox, it came to light that the company had moved people and resources off of Colonial Marines while still accepting milestone checks from Sega. Factor in their decision to outsource work on Colonial Marines to three other studios, and it's kind of hard to feel bad for Gearbox. This is not a conversation we're having. Look, you don't owe us nothing. Number 6, Mass Effect Andromeda, Bioware. We're marooned. 20,000 souls adrift at sea. When the power runs out, stays out, we need to know if that's safe harbor. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Once considered among the best in the business at constructing deep, story-driven RPGs, Bioware came face to face with their own limitations in Mass Effect Andromeda. Developed primarily by Bioware's Montreal studio, the game released in March of 2017 took criticism and controversy. It's really going to be something, isn't it? I haven't even shown you the best part. Many of the negative reviews were centered on issues such as animation glitches, reused plot threads from the original trilogy, inconsistent writing, and uninteresting characters. Additionally, sales of Andromeda supposedly fell short of the series' standards, leaving Bioware Montreal to be dissolved by Electronic Arts, and most of its employees moved to their EA Motive studios. You're someone to me. Number 5, Daikatana, Ion Storm. With the Daikatana in his possession, Kagi was able to travel back through time. There were plenty of signs that Ion Storm's Daikatana was falling apart, namely the fact that they switched engines midway through development. 
so it seemed tragically understandable that the final game was an ugly and misguided mess, brought down further by frustrating difficulty spikes and bizarrely outdated design decisions. Daikatana failed to recoup the considerable costs of its development and eroded whatever remained of the goodwill Ion Storm and co-founder John Romero had with the public. Even to this day, the story of how Daikatana eventually led to Ion Storm's closure stands as a cautionary tale to all would-be developers. Number 4. Too Human – Silicon Knights You do not appear to belong here. With a development period that began on the PS1 and finished on the Xbox 360 nine years later, Two Human had the makings of a well-intentioned flop from the start. At launch, critics found it to be highly ambitious as an action RPG, but hampered by infuriating controls and repetitive environments. However, among the general public it served as the clearest indication of Silicon Knights' downfall, a sentiment hammered home by the universally panned X-Men Destiny a few years later. Whatever successes Silicon Knights may have had, they couldn't overcome the public relations and financial costs of Too Human. Number 3. Banjo-Kazooie – Nuts and Bolts – Rare Third time is most definitely not the charm with Rare. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts opted to shift away from the classic 3D platforming of the previous games in the series in order to blend racing and vehicle customization, a decision that drew a ton of flack from its fans. The game's snarky comments aimed at past Banjo-Kazooie titles gave the impression that Rare, which is now owned by Microsoft, no longer cared for their original work. In the light of the game not selling exceptionally well, Rare was moved to connect game development. Number 2. Sonic the Hedgehog, aka Sonic 2006, Sega Sonic Team. I'm Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! What should have been a triumphant celebration of the 15th anniversary of Sega's Hedgehog mascot instead resulted in the disaster that was 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog. The departure of Yuji Naka and mismanagement of the game's development led to a glitch filled experience with three increasingly unpleasant to play campaigns subpar audiovisual design, and laughably poor writing. A consciousness? That's it. Sonic 06 left many with the sense that the Sonic team had lost their way and that Sega had given up on caring about quality in their games. Even years later, Sega's efforts to rework and reinvigorate the Sonic series still appear to be driven by a desire to undo this game's damage. Even if he's an outdated product of the 90s, the blue blur still deserved better. Number 1. E.T. the Extraterrestrial – Atari Incorporate. For a generation of gaming enthusiasts, this symbolizes all that was wrong with Atari at the time. E.T. the Extraterrestrial was meant to serve as a months later tie-in to the Steven Spielberg movie of the same name, with Atari in charge of the adaptation. In order to make it to the shelves in time for Christmas though, Atari instructed lead designer Howard Scott Warshaw to make a game in five and a half weeks. The result was a shallow, practically unplayable mess of a game. Its legacy is tied to the industry crash of 1983, as well as an urban legend that turned out to be true, that unsold copies were buried in a giant landfill in New Mexico. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day. Sorry.